Welcome to the podcast where we keep it real, talking all things women on the Iconic Women Show with your host, Michelle Watson, author, founder, public speaker, and certified performance coach. Get empowered and inspired while learning about overcoming adversity, spirituality, life, and business strategies that will help you achieve your goals. And now, here's your host, Michelle Watson. Great, and welcome once again to the Iconic Woman Podcast, a place where we keep it real, talking all things women. And again, today I have a phenomenal guest with us, and we're going to be speaking on a topic that so many women overlook, especially entrepreneurial women, but also mothers and women that have so many different hats that they juggle. So let me let me share a little bit about the woman that is with me in the studio today. Ah, wow. She she wears a lot of hats. She's she's a mom. She's a, a multi-award winning international speaker. She's a doctor, a podcaster. Um, oh my God. And she has a massive <laughs> message that by blending innate intuition with transformative technology, we can hack our health. Now, I wonder if you heard that. We can hack our health. And with us, we have none other than Dr. <laughs> Alka Patel. I, I, you know me, I always forget to introduce myself. For those of you watching for the first time, I am Michelle Watson, the host of the Iconic Woman podcast. But you know, I always say it's not about me, it's about the awesome guests that we have on here. And we're going to be keeping it real. Indeed. So on Iconic Woman podcast, we just keep it real. We go with the flow. And the topic for today is, is self-care really selfish? So... Alka, before we start, tell, tell the audience a bit about yourself. Um, you know, because I've just mentioned about the message. Now, that was a mouthful. Mm. What, is, what is the message? The message is this vessel, mm. your body, yeah. your brain, your mind, there's one. Okay. Okay, now. And we have this responsibility. Mm. I believe we all have this huge responsibility to take utmost care of it. Okay. And if we don't prioritize that, if we don't prime ourselves with that, mm. then what do we have? Wow. We, we're already starting, guys, like literally. Um, and I've been guilty of that. But I'm, I'm going to get to the hack in a minute. But I wanted us to really start from the place of what got you started on this journey? Mm. Like what made you recognize the importance of health? And, you know, we're going to go into a lot of things, but firstly, tell us what started you on this journey? What, what was the whole why behind this? Mm. It's a tricky question, you know, because we always imagine there's this pinnacle moment mm. in our life mm. and everything goes boom. And that was <laughs> that was the moment. Yeah. And let's be seriously Those honest, like, you know, moments, yeah, that, it doesn't really happen. Mm. So it's this sum of experience of life that gets okay. you to where you are now. And I think, you know, there were so many moments when I look back mm. uh, that mm. were very poignant for that. For me, I've always wanted to be a doctor. I can't imagine, I cannot remember a time when I didn't want that. I have a memory of being wow. on a stage, actually, um, at the age of seven. My dad put me on a, on a stage, uh, shiny, shiny white shoes, a little uh, top <laughs> that my mum had made. And I stood there and what I read out was, mm. today I would like to talk to you about food and health. Oh, so see. even at seven... I was talking about this stuff, and I didn't. I didn't mm. know that that's that that was something that was then embedded in me to to continue mm. talking about. How many years later? You know, how many decades later? Um, so the idea of health and, and living well has probably always been been with me. Um, became a doctor, and I became a doctor like I think most doctors become doctors. You mm. kind of fall into the mm. system of what you're taught and how that needs to be okay. really kind of entered into the world. And for me, you know, at, at medical school interviews, what do you want? Why do you want to be a doctor? I want to help people. Mm, and it's, mm. I know it sounds really cliche, cliche right? Yeah, it's like everyone yeah. wants to, but honestly, like from my heart, I wanted to help people. And then I got into the system of helping people mm. the way I was told to. And I recognized that I wasn't really making the difference wow. that I wanted, wanted to make. Um, and to be why? honest with you. Why didn't you feel that? Why? What, what, what was going on? Because I'm... Um, people started depending on me mm -hmm. and depending on my drugs. And I started to feel like I'd become a drug pusher. So I became a GP. <laughs> <laughs> I became a GP, a.k.a. drug dealer. Mm. And I, I don't say this lightly. I know, okay. I know, you know, big laugh about it. But genuinely, that's what 
happens in mm. the world of general practice. We have 10 minutes with our patients. It's true. And in it's 10 true. minutes, is you want to you give a quick fix. Yeah. And the quickest fix is is drugs, except it isn't a fix. Mm, mm, so mm. it's not the doctor's fault and it's not it's not the patient's fault. It's this, just the system that's evolved. The way it's been set up, yeah. And I kind of had this realisation that that was not fixing people. This dependence mm. on me as a doctor, dependence on, on the it's drugs like that, I was, that I was Temporary sort of fix, isn't it? Isn't exactly. It? Yeah, temporary. Do you know what? I started calling it McDonald's-style medicine. Oh, God. Um, She's coming for the McDonald's people. Here we go. Okay. I'm coming for the McDonald's. Yeah. McDonald's, McDonald's. No. <laughs> um, I started calling it McDonald's-style medicine because um, it started to feel like a drive through mm. You know, drive in, grab your drugs, 10 minutes of go. advice, go out, come back, yeah. you know, bog off. What's the next deal of the day? Come back wow, for more. Wow, and I, wow. I knew that wasn't right. I just, in fact, I talked about this a little bit in my TEDx talk um, as well. So... Um, and I think when that realisation started to hit, that's when mm. those kind of small embers of what can be different, what can be different, started to kind of really resonate with me. Like, wow. what should I do differently? And I didn't know. And then... <laughs> and then... And then... <laughs> and then I think when you, you've talked to a lot of women, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. And everyone 100%. has their own journey of pain. Yep, their own nuances, their own problems. Right. Different right. things. Yeah. And so it clicked. So it clicked. So I went through my own experience of burnout. Mm, mm. Um, and it's a word we use a lot, burnout, yeah, stress, yeah, yeah. burnout. We kind of you know, throw it around. It's very common but, at the minute. Yeah. Um, but for me, it was very physical. I ended up in hospital trying to fight a fever, ordinary fever. Like I should have been able to fight a fever, but I was so burnt out yeah, trying to be sure this amazing woman. Amazing wife, amazing mum, mm. amazing doctor, amazing human. You became amazingly hit, ill. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Wow. Ab absolutely. Um, oh. And it's, so that was a pinnacle point for me is mm. when you're so close to the end mm -mm. of life, when you know that there's still so much that you want to get, still want to help people. I wasn't done yet, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I had two, three young children um, at the time mm. um, as well. And I know people talk about near death experiences. Yeah. yeah. Harsh reality. And seeing the light and all of that. And you don't believe it. I mean, come on, you know, who does? But <laughs> see the light. See the light. <laughs> but I did. Mm. And I, there was there was a light, and I was running towards it. Oh wow! And then there was the shadows of my children stopping me. Ooh. And it was it's it was that it was moments like that. And it, you know, when you asked me, was there a moment? Mm, mm. That's what I hold in my memory as a reason to do things differently. Wow! 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 That's powerful. Yeah, and I I I guess kind of my own journey back to back to health. What is health? Like, yeah, what, yeah, what yeah, is no, it? Serious. And for me, the answer didn't lie at the end of a pill. It it wasn't, you know, it wasn't, the answers weren't there through through medication. Mm -hmm. The answers were there in, in understanding myself. Yeah. How I moved, how I ate, how I connected, what was important to me, what purpose felt like, what my identity mm -hmm. was. I know you said at the beginning, all those roles, those lists yeah, of roles, this, but, yeah, you know, yeah. in that, there's just there's there's somebody, one person. One person. There's this one person, and we never, it's like a dice, you never yeah. see all those all sides. No, you don't. Like my no. husband doesn't see the doctor; he sees the wife. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My children see, see the, the mother. mother. Mm -hmm. They don't see the entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so, you know, when you have all of those, yep. and you're thinking, like, well, who am I? <laughs> you get lost. You can easily get lost right. in right. that whole mix. You can easily get lost. Which brings me to something that I was really reflecting on when I thought about this title about is self-care really selfish? Mm -hmm. And it was the fact of, especially with entrepreneurs, you know, people that's running with purpose and stuff like that. You, 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 you so busy building the vision that you forget about the vision carrier, mm. right? You're so busy taking care, making sure the vision works, making sure it happens, but you're not looking out for the person that needs to make it happen. Because right. the vision, when you die, not necessarily the vision dies with you, because obviously we know that legacy lives on. But you, you, if, if you leave this earth prematurely because of our lack of care to ourselves, then we also leave that vision prematurely, mm. you know? Mm. And I, we see it so many times that we run, and I'm sure you've seen it, because I'm, I'm guilty. I am guilty because I didn't take care of, like self-care was not on my, my list. Mm. When, when I look at my goals list, going through most of my years in life, right, I... Self-care was not on the top of it. Of course. Yeah. Um, and if anything got dropped from my business throughout my year, it would be the gym. Mm. It would be the eating healthy. It would always get dropped off the list because yeah. everything else needs to be ticked. Yeah. But that was one that I didn't really make the effort to 
tick. Mm. And so when you come across individuals that are so wired in the hustle that they mm. forget about the health, they think about the H, the hustle, but not the health. How do, how do you deal with that? How do you get them to recognize that Without you, without you giving yourself that self-care, because we tend to think it's selfish, but we're going to get to that in a minute. Mm. But looking at somebody that is a vision carrier and seeing them be so caught up with the vision and making that business work and they're not taking care of themselves, like how do you tackle conversations like, mm. Mm. like that? The important thing there, Michelle, I think, is to meet people where they are mm. and mm. meet the language of the person. Yeah who's in front of you. So this is what I do. So when you're looking at entrepreneurs, mm. business women, women who are, you know, aspiring, ambitious, driven, yeah. go, 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 go. Rather than selfish self-care, mm. let's think about strategic self-care. self-care. I love that. Right? Because we have strategies for our businesses. Of course we do, <laughs> right? So what about a strategy for your for own your health? Body. For yourself, we as don't. you say, the the, yeah. the carrier, yeah, 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 the, the yeah, energy yeah. that's dro- yeah. you are the driving force behind your business. Hundred percent, right? So let's have a strategy behind that. And this is the big, big problem with self care, and I see this all the time, mm. is that people think it's all about massages and getting your nails yeah, done. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. And, and listen, I love that, and I, I do do that, and it's great. But that is not the strategy behind self care. Hundred percent. Because if you think about how you show up in the world. Mm, 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 mm healthy and happy great but also it's more than how do you translate that into from the the human being to the human doing what are you doing all day long right you're Mm -hmm. driven by your work you're driven by wanting to make a difference you're driven by wanting to make an impact so have a strategy behind that that. yeah um and that's why I know in the bio you sort of introduced my innate intuition with transformative yeah. technology but we're used to in our businesses all day long looking at data yeah Hello, there's this whole body here <laughs> that's full of it. Oh, wow. Let's just extract it and start to make self-care something that we prime our day with. Wow. And- I love that. I love that. And the reason why I'm, I'm coming in with this is because you said our body is, you know, it's filled with data. And the reason why I want to touch on this quickly is because of the fact that we, we do it so many times, you know, the year has started. Okay. I'm going to hit the gym. I'm going to, I'm going to diet. I'm going to fast. I'm going to do all of these things. And we don't stop to actually check, you know, is this what my body needs? Right. right? And so you may, somebody may be like, I'm, I'm giving up. I'm giving up because I've been fasting or I've, I, I've been cutting my foods down or I've been going to the gym and nothing's happening. It's that senseless <laughs> self-care. There's no strategy behind that. It's senseless self-care because you think you're going to start with something. You don't know why. Mm-hmm. You might have a goal. Maybe it's, you know, I want to lose X amount of weight or, or something like that. But really, you, you have to understand what information your body's already giving you, mm-hmm. which is why I do a lot of testing mm-hmm. on people. Like if you don't know where you're at, you don't, you, you can't possibly get to the know where you're going to yeah, yeah. want to get to. Um, um, and I love this time that we're living in. Like, it's it's a, absolutely amazing yeah, that we've yeah. got access to information. So if you think about something like, I don't know, your DNA, mm. right, your genome, mm. all those genes now that we start to fully understand what they're doing, yeah. how they can work for us. And guess what? You can test. There's a difference. There's bio-individuality between mm, us. Mm, we are mm, not the same. Same, right? definitely. We're of not. course we're not the same. And yet everyone is meant to aspire to this, you know, nine to five and this is how we're all meant to eat. And No. Yeah, 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 we're yeah. fundamentally different. You and I will sit here now maybe sipping the same cup of coffee, having mm-hmm. a very, very different response to it. Yeah. And yet you go on Instagram and it's like, don't touch coffee. And someone else says, have coffee. <laughs> and someone else says, don't touch carbs. And another one else says, don't touch you know, proteins. And it's like, what's going on? I need to tap into my body. Test, 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 test. Find the information for yourself. Mm-hmm. And these tests, the reason I do them all the time with my with my clients, is a yeah. finger prick test that I can send to your home, saliva test that, that you can do, whole range of data, Mm-hmm. What you won't know is how to interpret it, though. Right? Uh, well, yeah, okay. that's, why, so, that's where you come in, right? right. So, but, but having that guidance and having that support to f- get to fully know how you function mm. will then enable you to get out in the world with the energy that you need yeah. to power drive your business because ultimately that's what we all are. We're, we're energy. Yeah. But we've got to put that behind behind what we do. And I agree because it, com- it becomes confusing because I've been there. I've been there where, you know, somebody's saying, you know, do the calorie countings, your BMI, you you know, um, these fat burning coffee or you go from fat burning coffee, you know, do apple cider vinegar, do all of these fat diets. 
And sometimes you get so tired of trying to apply all of these different information. And some, some women literally just give up. Yeah. And it can become very discouraging because can you imagine for someone that is really bothered about, you know, maybe the way that they look, their health mm. or mm. their weight. And you go out there and you've made this calculated decision to make a difference with your health. And then you go out there and there's That's a confusing. barrage of yeah. information yeah. and contradictory information. And so you end up getting to a point of like, is this even worth it? Because you become so unhappy because you become so engrossed with all of these different right. information right. 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 and it becomes confusing. Yeah. I remember when I used to go to the gym. So, you know, I have a condition with my spine and I used to go to the gym and then I end up going to the gym and then I come home and then I can't move the following day. And then, you know, I'm my legs are swollen and all different things because I had a personal trainer that didn't understand right. my condition. All he was thinking about tone, this, that yeah. and all of these yeah. things. And he was giving me things to do that was not right for my body. Mm -hmm. And I remember I was doing legs and I was doing legs to the point where I was in pain for weeks. Right. And right. I remember somebody saying to me, yeah, your, your muscles gonna be aching, but the level that you have been mm. for the past how many weeks, mm. that's not meant to happen. Yeah. And I'm going and I'm saying to saying it to him and he's saying, you have to be working through this. Right, right, okay. Right, okay. And yeah. <laughs> the work that I was working through, I was damaging, yeah, actually dam damaging course. myself. Yeah, yeah, and that's the big risk, isn't it? Is yeah. that we we do things without, there's always, you know, heal and harm. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Everything work, works together. You look at your entire body. Mm. There is not a single system in your body that either works alone hurts alone or heals alone Ooh. it's all together it works together and we have to look at this kind of synchronicity mm. um, with what you're doing um as well um but just making me laugh you're talking about fat burning yeah. um just there um because another thing that i really really want to do is make health fun Oh, like it, it's yeah. no fun being Hallelujah. in that degree of pain, because... <laughs> right? <laughs> is it right? So we've oh. got to make health fun, and this is why I love to bring in some of the technology mm, because, mm. again, like devices. So when you're talking about something like fat burning or carb burning, yeah. like what state of energy are you in in terms of again your metabolism, your focus, your concentration? And I've got a device that can mm. tell you. So if you're going to the gym mm. and you want to be burning energy yeah. and getting into a state of fat metabolism, don't guess. Test, mm. right? In fact, can I show you? Oh, yes, please. So, this is a, a little device, Ooh. okay? And you literally turn it on, mm -hmm. um, and it's with an app um, as well. So, I, I mean, obviously, can't show you that on here, but you literally, like, you inhale and you count into, uh, you're going to be inhaling for a count of uh, four. So, mm -hmm. theory holding your breath for 10 seconds, but I won't do it, do it live, and then breathing out. Okay, into the machine. You're breathing out for a count, um, a, a count of ten. And what happens is you measure your carbon dioxide in this. Oh wow! And your carbon dioxide that you're met, you're pouring out will change depending on whether you're burning carbohydrates or whether you're burning fats. Ooh. And it's personal, right? Back oh. to personalized care, strategic self care, personalized medicine. This is what it's bio individuality, right? This is hacking your health. Oh, this is I how was going to come to that right. in a minute. This but. is how you hack your health because mm. you're, you can go to the gym and your PT can tell you all these things to do. What is actually happening with your metabolism? Mm. Right. So you've got to test and track. And you, I want you to be in control of your health. Right. right. So you've just mentioned it. I was going to bring it up later, but you've mentioned it. So let's bring it in now. Right. I know we have a lot of hackers that hack computers and all of these things, right? <laughs> yeah. And I'm not thinking that my body is a computer, but you're telling me that I can hack my health. I need to hear more about this. Okay. Like, <laughs> I need to, because you know what? For me, when I hear the word hack, you're showing me shortcuts. You're showing me, not necessarily shortcuts, but the right cut. We always say shortcut, but you're showing me, I guess, a hacker has a way of going into things mm from a different angle that it's like you're breaking through certain yeah. barriers, yeah, isn't it? Absolutely. So you're telling me that I can break through certain barriers in my body. I need to hear more about this. Yeah. Like, yeah. No, and, and you've hit the nail on the head there, Michelle. It, hacking, you know, it, it's got a bit of a kind of, it's a bit of a Marmite word, yeah. isn't yeah, yeah, it? Yeah. There's, you know, the haters and the lovers. But really what you're trying to do is get to the very core mm, mm. of your health. Okay. Right. You're hacking right to the control center. Because that's where you need to get to is the control center of your health. Wow, you so that then center. 
You take over and take control, which which is what hacking hackers do. Yeah, right. Yeah. They get to the control center. I'm thinking of you know computer hackers like all of that. Get to the control center, take over control, and then you're in charge. Mm -hmm. And that's about getting to the core control, having having responsibility for your health as well. Mm -hmm. And then, as I said, having some fun with it, exploring it. And you can only do that if you can hack it and if you can get right to the center of that and then take it take it over. So it's it's biohacking. It's hacking your biology, yeah. how, your, how you function, your physiology, your biology, mm -hmm. your neurology. These are all words that we think are sort of outside our, our control and sit in some lab or in some, some doctor's office, but they're not. Mm -hmm. They're in your control. Like even right now, both of us, the way that we're sitting, our posture, yeah. is affecting our neurology. Okay. Our breathing rate, right, your breath is with you all the time. Can you hack your breath? Of course you can. Raise your conscious awareness of it and slow it down. Magic number, oh. right, magic number. Magic number is six. Okay. If you slow your breath down to less than six breaths a minute, <laughs> okay. what the research <laughs> tells <laughs> us sorry, Dan, is that you activate your parasympathetic nervous system. So I am going to... Breathe six times per minute. Is that what you're saying? And how do you do that? So you breathe in for a count of four. And you breathe out for a count of six. Oh, so you won't breathe out for a count of four again. No, breathe out for a count of six. So, so what, what, what does that do? Like, what, what, what's the benefit that I get from that? So that is activating, I mentioned your parasympathetic nervous system. So what is that? Yeah, so so nice that stuff. is your, I like to call it your P for peaceful, P for parasympathetic. So it's your peaceful nervous system. Mm. So allowing yourself to get that reset. And I don't mean you've got to go and sit under a tree and be zen for an hour, <laughs> right? No businesswoman's got time for that. <laughs> we don't need to do that. 60 seconds. 60 seconds, in one minute you can get that reset. So you know sometimes you can feel your stress levels rising yeah, or you're yeah, about yeah. to go into a meeting that you, you're a little bit apprehensive about or you're mm. going on a stage and, you know, there's that, that, that sense of just having that control, getting into that peaceful nervous system. And it's not just about stress in the moment, mm, but this mm. is also, I talk a lot about ageing and reversing ageing. Yeah, and remember, this is about, about taking control of your nervous system in order to be able to, to do that. So magic number six, slow down your breathing rate to six breaths a minute just for 60 seconds, mm. and you're turning on your ability to think more clearly, your ability to have more logical thinking, your ability mm. to have mm. more clarity and creativity because you're you're in control. And that's those are very, very simple hacks that are with us all the time. Yeah. I guess, I mean, I've got so many, I could literally just talk for hours um, about them. Even think about the light that we're under right now, right? How many people get out into the morning light? How many people have actual sunlight hitting mm. the back of their eyes? Vitamin D. And more than that, we it's like... Away. We put shades on, don't we? No, we like, we're going to the oh salon, we put shades on. We'll don't even get me started on that. But the light, right, so we're under this artificial light. A yeah. lot of people will get up, get on their computers, work, 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 work. As you say, mm. it's the hustle, you know, where's yeah. the H for health? Where's mm. the H for hustle? We're on the hustle. We think we're in we're in light and then we try and fall asleep at night and we wonder why we, women can't sleep at night because we're thinking mm. about everything that's going on. But it's physiology. Your body needs a huge differential in lux. So lux is how you measure light um, between day and night. Okay. And this lighting doesn't cut it, even if you kind of dim the lights at night. Mm -hmm. So you've got to be outside, even if it's for 60 seconds, for your brain to know, your hypothalamus, part of your brain that's kind of starting to release all your hormones, to know that this is daylight. Yeah. And then in the evening to know that this is night. So then it's going to switch on a whole set of other hormones, melatonin, to help you sleep, for example. So if you don't do that, Simple hack, there's light outside, the sunlight is there, go, mm. go outside, go and do that. Um, and yet many people don't, you're indoors wow. all day long under artificial lighting. Ah, wow, you have me thinking, you know how many times I've done that? But that's what I'm saying, it's so easy to get carried away by not taking care of yourself, which yeah. brings us to the meat of the matter. Is self-care selfish? Oh. Is self-care selfish? Why is it that women tend to think that self-care is selfish. I tell you why. Because it's often thought of without a purpose. Mm. So if you do something without a purpose, it can sort of feel a bit more sort of self-indulgent and just self-fulfilling. Yeah. But there is a purpose behind self-care. And that is so that you can do what you want to do to make the impact and the difference that you need to make in this world, right? You talked about legacy. Yeah, yeah. It's not just about leaving a legacy. You're living the legacy. The legacy. Mm, I love that. You have to living live it. And and self-care is your only route to do that. 
You know, if you want optimal brain function, if you want optimal energy, if you want if you want to physically feel better, you need that agility. The only way you're going to do it is to take care of yourself mm -hmm. to then pour out everything that, that's in you. Yeah, I, I totally get that because I, I remember I was speaking to another guest the other day and we were speaking about the fact that so many of us want to pour from an empty cup. Mm. You know, and it's just like you go on an airplane and the air hostess says, put your put your mask on first because you, you can't help anybody when you're dead. But for some reason, we tend to think that we should be. And I don't know if it's a woman. I believe it's more of a woman thing than a men thing. Um, and it could be because of the nurture inside of us. We think that we have to be there for everybody else and we should be at the bottom of the pile. Deal with our self last. See, I grew up with my nan being someone that would cook my dinner. And if somebody came, she would give it to them. And I would have to wait for her to cook it again. Right. So I grew up with the mentality of people first, myself last. Mm. And that can feed so much into the lack of self-care without you even realizing it. Because we're thinking, oh, I'm actually doing something good by being there for other people. Mm. I'm actually doing something good by showing up for my business. But never, ever stop and think about the fact that actually I'm not doing good for my business because I'm actually not taking care of me the person that's carrying the business, mm. right? Mm. And we don't, there's so many times that we don't do that. Mm. And we constantly hear, the moment that you start looking after yourself or, or you know, as you said, you know, your husband sees you as wife, your, your, your children see you as mommy and they, everybody wants you to show up, right? Your clients want you to show up. Your husband wants you to show up. Your children want you to show up. But you want you to show up as well. Mm. But we mm. don't show up for ourselves. And it's very worrying because there's so many women going through depression, so many women that are burnt, as you get it, as you said, the word burnt out. Now, what I want to ask in regards to this is because we had a little bit of a laugh about this this morning. And what I want to ask is, how easy is it for a busy woman, a woman that's juggling all of those hats, how easy is it for her to implement self-care? Especially, you know, somebody like you, you're a speaker, you know, you're traveling all around, you're speaking, you're, you're, you're still a mother, you're still a wife and you're running your business, mm. looking after all these clients. Like how easy is it? Because somebody might be watching and thinking there's not enough time in the day mm. Mm. to put yeah. myself in. Yeah. Yeah. This, equa this equation. So we talk a lot about time management, don't yeah, we? Yeah. 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 Like, I've <laughs> got to manage my time. I've got to manage my time. Switch that thought. Mm, mm, mm. Switch it to energy management. Ooh. Okay, break this down now. Break it down. I need more. You're, you're managing your energy. Mm. And so for most women, you know, you start off the day going, right, that's it, I'm on it. You're, you know, multitasking, sorting out the kids, get, you know, doing all of that, running your business, da, da, da. and what happens is your energy drops. Mm, 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 mm. And so what you want to be is taking on the identity of an energetic person. Okay. What would an energetic person do right now? And, and even that simple question, mm. when you're faced with the choice of what to eat at lunchtime, what would an energetic person eat? Or when you're in the middle of, you know, you've been at your desk for four hours and you know you're losing steam and you're reaching for that fifth cup of coffee, <laughs> what would an energetic person do right now? Mm. You know, take on, that, take on that identity because you'll make choices. There's mm. this whole, have you heard of the theory of affirmation? Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. You know, all of that, again, around how your thoughts become your actions. actions yeah. and, and there's neurology to this. This is all about your, your synapses and your neurons. This is not just an ethereal kind of you yeah, know, yeah. thought. It's, it's for real. So if you actually take on the identity of what an energetic person is, is, if you surround yourself by people who have that energy, if you surround by yourself by people who take care of themselves, right? Yeah. If you're if you surround yourself by people who go to the gym, who do go for, who go walking, mm -mm -mm. who actually think about their their nourishment, you're going to start to emulate that. Yeah. So yeah. that's important. Is who are you around? Mm -hmm. And you know what? I get it. It's sometimes hard in a household. Yeah. Right. Children, husband, you, partner, mm -mm. where you might not all be on the same page. Yeah, yeah. Right. So there's so. things that sneak into your house, like the, the, the crisp drawer, you know, we all have that, right? Is it doesn't serve you well yeah, because yeah, yeah. you're 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 trying to be on this journey. But really again, the, there's a whole other environment outside outside that you can really start to be around. Who are you having conversations with mm. about health? Are you, you talking to other right? hassled, frazzled women <laughs> who've got self care at the bottom of the list? Are you surrounding yourself by other women who actually have already prioritized it? Do you think it takes a lot of self-discipline. So 
keeping it open for the women that are even maybe not entrepreneurs because we have women that are not entrepreneurs mm. that's watching this podcast right now and even though they're not entrepreneurs they're still struggling to even do self-care for themselves you know young women that struggle to go to the gym or they just think you know what I'm, I'm young so I can eat whatever I want now I can do whatever I want I can drink however I want and it's all good like would you not say that it's it, it's actually better for them to have these recognitions from an early age mm. than to start later when it's a lot harder or is it or it does does it does it matter what age you start doing this so there's or? two things there one is Really, it's never too late. Mm -hmm. So I don't want anyone listening today to feel, you know, what it, I, I should have done this in my twenties. I should have done this ten years ago. There's, mm -hmm. there's no point now. Um, it's never too late to start on a journey of just. And I like that self discipline yeah. and that that sense of like I'm in, I'm in, back to I'm in charge. I'm in control. Mm -hmm. I've got this. I can do this. I think it's, it's never too late to do, to do that. But yes, the earlier you start, you know, you impregnate impregnate those habits, yeah. and that is the hardest thing for most people is habits. Habits, yeah. right? Yeah, you start 100%. off where are we? We're in whatever month we're in now, right? <laughs> you know, you start off in January. Those resolutions, don't do that, right? You've just got to create again back to the identity, back to knowing the purpose behind why you're doing mm -hmm. what you're doing, and really having the discipline to say, I'm not going to veer off this. Mm -hmm. And if you, you know, obstacles happen, life happens. Yeah. One day, two days, great, but actually get back on. Which So I always talk about something that I like to call your minimal effective dose. Mm -hmm. So this is for the busy women out there, as you say, if people are busy, it's at the bottom of their list. What's your minimal effective dose mm -hmm. for your own self-care? Mm -hmm. What's that going to look like for you? And again, for just both of us, it will look different. Two steps. Right. Yeah, well, right? Yeah, it's, and it's I come back to that, the 60 seconds. You don't have an hour to go to the gym, not a problem. Have you got 60 seconds? Can you do five squats while you're waiting for the kettle to boil? Of course mm, you can. Mm, can you step outside for 60 seconds into sunlight? Of course you can. Can you take six slow deep breaths? Of course you can. Nice. Can you stand on one leg while you're on a Zoom call? Of course you can. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so it's really, it's really about just implementing. And I think it's a case of we make it so hard or we make it seem so hard and difficult that it be, it actually becomes hard, because we it's that almost that like we're looking at the staircase as one whole thing as opposed to just each step by step. Because if we actually do that, just starting by one small habit a day, it mm. makes a lot of difference. It's it's a bit like um, saving. People will be like, okay, I want to wait till I reach my my thousand pound before I save. Mm. Whereas if if you were saving five pounds daily. It would amount to the thousand pounds. So yes and no. Yes and no. Yes, yes and no. Because I think a hundred percent. You know the the, the well, that one percent rule, right? Yeah, you know, one yeah. step at a time, always. But you have to have a goal in mind. Mm -hmm, you have mm -hmm. to have you have to have that end goal in sight. Because what I find a lot of women do is they'll just start something. Yeah. Not yeah, really yeah, yeah. knowing where's it going. Mm -hmm, right. Mm -hmm. So you have to have a sense of direction Good. with what you're doing. Absolutely. Nice. And set your sight on that mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then take the steps towards that with that minimal effective dose, that one percent, that small step um, every day. But the biggest thing is consistency rather than uh, a big step. Mm -hmm, right? mm -hmm. The small thing every day is much, much more powerful than the big thing, you know, once a month um, for okay. sure. But again, um, you know, I'm a data driven doctor, so I'm always going to keep coming back to this is again, you've got to use information to guide you, mm -hmm. right? Which is why I do things like put data rings on, on people and, and, and sensors on people, because I think you've still got to know that you're heading in the right direction. Because many times, and you've seen this analogy mm -hmm. where your ladder is against the wrong wall, wall yeah, and yeah, you're climbing yeah. up it, but yeah, it, you yeah, know, yeah, it, it's yeah, the wrong not, wall, not, right? Yeah, so place, you've got yeah. to keep on a little bit like um, when you it, like you maybe have heard this analogy as well about airplanes, mm -hmm. you know, you just go one degree off track. Okay, and you think yeah, you're yeah. going London to New York to, yeah, and you end, end up, up London else. to like, you know, Antarctic <laughs> just because you're one degree off track. track. So you've yeah. always got to kind of reposition, keep checking your dials, like dial in. Even that intuitive sense of how am I today? Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. Scale yourself, not to 10. How am I? I feel like about a seven right now. What I need to do to edge to an eight. Right, maybe that's right. going to the you know bathroom and doing a power pose of some yeah, nature, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Whatever that is, maybe it's sending a text to a friend. Like whatever you need to do, what is it that I need to do to yeah. kind of dial up? Um, and I do a lot of that with physiology and all sorts of other, you know, at a, a much deeper level. But at a very simple level, we've all got access to that. Haven't we? Nice, good. And I love that you said that because you were touching more on the mental aspect. And I think 
that is definitely something that women have to pay attention to when it comes to self-care because if your mind is telling you that self-care is selfless, selfish, then you're not going to really want to implement self-care, then are you? Mm. Because if you're thinking that doing something is selfish and if you're somebody that doesn't believe in selfish actions, then you're not going to do it because to you, you're thinking, I'm being selfish right now by taking time out for myself. I'm being selfish right now by going to the gym because the house needs cleaning. I, I'm being selfish right now by even taking a few minutes out. I want you to stop using that word, Michelle. <laughs> like, no, like, but that's but what, what they're using. But what if we actually took that word out of our vocabulary? Because we haven't even got a definition of it. What is selfish? But that's that's but that's the that's the point that I want to, us to come to. Because the fact of the matter is, people are actually saying it. So that's why we can't even stop saying it. Because somebody is actually out there telling themselves, "I am being selfish right now." by doing X, mm. which is not selfish. And that's why I had to say, is self-care actually selfish? No, it is not. But the fact of the matter is there are people out there that actually do believe it. And so that's why, what what do they need to do from a mental aspect yeah. or a mental shift? Yeah. Do you yeah. understand? To get to that point of recognizing, just like you said, that word doesn't, it's not supposed to exist. Well, exactly that. Let's just change the, <laughs> let's change the language. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If, you, if there's one thing you do is just change the language. There is no word selfish anymore. Okay. It's cool. priority. Love it. Right? And prioritizing me because I'm important to the people that need me. Yeah. That's it. That's it. That's all you're doing. It's still going to be hard for some people. Mm. <laughs> Do you know how long it took me? Mm. It took me a long time. And even when I thought that I was prioritising me, I wasn't. And that is what is sad. Mm. Because a lot of us get so carried away with doing what we think is right that we don't actually realise that it may be right for somebody else but mm. not right for mm. myself. Do you know what I did, Michelle? And I, I totally understand this because there's so much noise in the world mm. and so many other perceptions and pe other people's ideas that start to influence yours. And of course that's going to happen. We live in a, a, in a connected world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I had to go and disconnect myself in order to find my answers to those very questions that you're, mm. you're ans asking. Um, and this might sound strange um, for someone who's a speaker to do, but I dipped into silence. And I say dipped in, but really I was silent for seven whole days. Wow. So not a single word came out of my mouth. I did this um, actually on my 50th birthday. So as turning a, this wonderful new decade and uh, all my family and friends were like, oh, where's the party? Where's the party? And I was like, no, no there party. isn't. I'm heading off alone. And so that I need a space for solitude. Mm -hmm. I had this craving and this calling. And I think a lot of women have this, yeah, but yeah. they don't, don't get they don't tune through. into it because everyone else is important. Mm -hmm. But we all need some space for silence and solitude. And you give yourself that. And I took myself off to the mountains of Spain for seven mm -hmm. days of silence nice, and not a single nice. word came out of my mouth. And that allowed me, my mind to settle and for me to really understand what mattered to me, what's important to me. What is love? Well, I'm glad that you said that because I was literally going to ask you, your mouth was settled, but was your brain speaking? I was going to ask you right. that because... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, no, don't... It's not easy. <laughs> your brain is like a snow globe, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like constantly stirring and then you think it's going to settle and then it takes one little thought to come along and it snowballs again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like one of those snow globes that just keeps going. But I tell you, you know what? After sort of three, four days, mm, it, it just settled. Had no choice, didn't it? Absolutely. And I, I closed my mouth, but my body was needed to move for those first few days. Mm. And then I was able to still my body... And then everything else kind of followed after. Oh. So what I'm saying to um, to women is don't, you can't do seven days of silence. Mm -hmm. Great. Can you do seven minutes? <laughs> or maybe even seven seconds. I was just going to say that because there's some women that can't even do seven, seven, okay. seven seconds. Give yourself seven seconds. Seven just seven seconds, seconds is just seven. to just drop into yourself mm -hmm. and just think, you know, what do I need right now? Yeah, wow. Well, I had the opportunity of really spending the day with you to really see how your day pans out, right? <laughs> and it was fun because it was like, even though you have this whole day ahead and even though we have, you know, we we know that later we're going to be, we're going to be coaching, we're going to be speaking and doing all of these things, but we've found the time to head to the gym but even before that you you had your own you had your <laughs> own start of the day I had my own start of the day like I love for me I love waking up you know reading my bible praying 
um, just really listening to some lovely worship music because it just gets me mm. in the right state of mind. But I know that for some people, the first thing that they do, they want to check the email. Yeah. They want to check social media. How many people like my page? Mm. How many people commented on, on my post? And the, the day starts off, the moment their eyes open, the day started off with them going through that motion. So do you have a routine? Do you have a daily mm. routine that really make sure that your self-care is incorporated daily? Yeah, I love that. I love that question. And I think it's a, it's a really valuable one to ask. And mm. everyone's routines will be different, but I think there is something about having a rhythm. I mean, mm. we're all defined by our rhythms. There's a whole circadian rhythm that we, mm. we have. So how do you tune it, tune into that? So, yes, I do. And you probably got a little sneak peek of it. <laughs> but um, probably what you didn't see was the stuff that you, you couldn't see because it's in my it was in my mind. So nice. I'll open my eyes mm. um, and I don't open my eyes to an alarm clock. Mm, mm. so I've been able to just tune myself to just naturally to wake, wake up, up. Yeah. and we can all do this so I wake up a very similar time every day give or take mm -hmm. you know 20 sure. minutes here or there yeah. um, but there's always this fear like I've got to get up on time but yeah. you just yeah. let yourself and you will yeah. um, so I wake up around six, six o'clock in the morning every, every mm. day um, and then you're gonna find this funny but I ask myself these six questions and they're all about how to turn your dreams to success mm. um, and I, we're very acronym driven yeah, you and I. Yeah. Um, so it's D R E A M S. Oh. So every single morning. So the first question I'll share. Is it okay if I yeah, just share? Please. Okay. I'll just share the, uh, share my six morning questions. So the first question is D for difference. What difference do I want to make in the world today? Mm, love that. And it's not about having long answers to that. This is again. I talk about sixty seconds. This mm. is again something to do in you know that first minute of waking up. Just that simple question. What difference yeah. do I want to make in the world today? Mm -hmm. And sometimes it might be as simple as you know I want to give my daughter lots of compliments, oh, yeah. or it might be that first patient I'm going to see. I'm going to really make a difference in the, in the, in their yeah. health. But it, yeah. it it can be anything. Um, and then the R uh, the D R offer is for ready. Mm. How ready am I for the day today? And what's important about that question, Michelle, is because I know I'm asking myself that every morning, mm. I'm prepped and ready from the night before. Love, love. I really believe love in that. preparedness, you know, yeah. just being prepared, prepared for the expected because life is always going to give us the so unexpected, unexpected, right? 100%. So then there's this readiness, yeah. you know, yeah. you're ready. Uh, the E is, and we've alluded a little bit to this already, which is, and maybe you can guess, which is energy. energy. <laughs> yeah. right. What energy do I want to radiate into the world today? Yeah. Because I truly believe that, you know, what you give out comes back, back to you in whatever yeah. guise it does, but it really does radiate back. So if I'm radiating out certain energy mm. and that might be the energy of kindness, it might be mm. the energy of patience, it might be the energy of courage, but I choose an energy for the, for the day. Yeah, um, where are we? D-R-E-A okay. is the affirmation. What's my mm. affirmation for the day? Mm. Um, and I just state that as an I am yeah. because I find that very, very powerful. Mm. And then the M is tapping into my motivation. What is motivating me today? We've, we've all got drivers. There's always something that drives you. I like to kind of enter the world with this kind of, you know, this pull yeah. rather than being kind of pushed to do something. It's like, kind of what's driving so, me? What's, yeah. what's pulling me forward? I'm actually wanting to do it. Exactly. And then the S is, of course, topic of today, self-care. Self -care. What am I doing for my self-care yeah. today? Mm. And so I ask myself those six questions every single morning. Oh, and then... One thing I've always said, and I said this to my husband, is do not put your feet on the ground without a smile so, on your oh, face. Yeah, of course. My one is about saying thank you. Right. Gratitude. Love that. So, like, don't, my feet will not touch the floor without plastering that smile on my face. And it's, 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 there's this connection between the, just the gesture and the expression of mm, the smile. Yeah. And yeah. also, again, you know, what hormones it's triggering, what, what, what it's doing to your biochemistry is very, very powerful. So, that's just the first few minutes. Wow, <laughs> wow. Yeah, that is, it's beautiful because for me, you know, even as I'm waking up, when you're saying you're asking yourself questions, and for me, I ask questions and it, it, it's, it's all around how, it's the same thing, you may not ask the same questions, but it's all around how I want to show up mm. on that day, you know, and really get in direction. So I love reading my Bible, I love praying because... That's where my compass comes from yeah. for the day. And I love to look and reflect at maybe conversations I had from the previous day or how I interacted with someone, you know, how I responded. Could I could I improve on my response? Could I improve on how mm. I showed up for somebody mm. Mm. yesterday? And can I make that difference today? You know, so I really love that. And I think if people did that a lot more, yeah. it would give them that time to just stop yeah. and yeah. be 
Yeah, yeah. You know, and I love that. That's why I love the fact when you when you say about, you know, being a human being instead of a human doing. But it's been brilliant. Mm. I love your hacks. So <laughs> how how can how can people get a hold of you if they want more information about the hacks? I always saw this ring. I didn't even know that this ring is collecting data. Like, we need to definitely speak more about this afterwards, right? So there's a lot of hacking going on over here, guys. A lot of health hacking yes. happening over here, right? Um, but if, if they want to know more about you and hear all about what you're doing, where can they find you? Oh, very easy. Uh, you'll find me on social, Dr. Alka Patel UK. So all the kind of social media. My website is probably the best place, which is dralkapatel.com. Um, mm-hmm. You'll find lots of information about the, the stuff. Um, I do a lot of age reversing. I said 10 years younger in 10 weeks, you know, mm. who doesn't want that, right? Do, do, so. you, mind, do you mind me asking you <laughs> Here we go. for the audience, like, how old are you? Because <laughs> they, they, if I tell them, they're not going to believe me. So it's like, Okay. Well, I kind of alluded to it. Um, I've got to give you two ages here. I can't just, okay. you know, there's, there's two very important ages. So one is the birth certificate age, which is which is the passport <laughs> age, which, uh, which most of us tend to go by. Um, so my birth certificate age is 51. Ooh, okay. Um, 51, But guys. the real age, <laughs> yeah. the age that we all should know about ourselves, mm-hmm. because this is what is going to determine your trajectory, your lifespan, your health span, which is your biological age, which is the age of your cells. Mm. My biological age is over 30 years younger than that. So it is wow. 20. <laughs> okay, I need to speak to you about my biological <laughs> clock because I need to go back I need to go back in time. But no, it's been it's been awesome having you here with us and I'm sure just like myself those watching have learned so much. So thank you so much. You're absolutely and definitely an iconic woman. Imagine a lifestyle where your health and career are aligned. A lifestyle that puts the story in your hands. Your spark for life ignited. Your productivity, your creativity, and your efficiency at a peak. You want your health to flourish so your business can flourish too. Hi, I'm Dr. Alka Patel. I'm a GP, a lifestyle medicine physician, and a health coach. And I started my career much like you, on a professional high, driven to build my career and find success. But this drive in my professional life meant I put my health on the back burner and I ignored the signs. The sacrifice of sleep so I could just get one more thing done, never asking for help and an indignant independence to do it all and an inability to just say no. And of course, the superlative standard setting to be an exceptional parent, an exceptional spouse, an exceptional friend, and an exceptional doctor. My own sink into burnout led me to vigorously reevaluate my trajectory and work out what it really meant to be healthy and happy. I have discovered how putting my lifestyle first has been transformative for me. And I have a deep responsibility to share with you all that I know to help you live your longest, healthiest, happiest life by putting your lifestyle first. Because I now have a renewed confidence. I wake up ready for the day, I laugh more than I did before, I sleep well and I eat consciously, I dance and I exercise in a way I love, and I relax, meditate and journal and I spend happy moments soaking up the chatter of my children. And my career, well, that's just thriving. Let me help you to reconnect with yourself and live the lifestyle that you love and deserve. So thank you guys for tuning in to today's episode of The Iconic Woman. I'm looking forward to see you on the next one. So remember, don't forget to subscribe, but also share with someone that you know will benefit from these conversations. And again, as I always say, you're an iconic woman, you're beautiful. And guess what? Go out there and represent. Thank you once again for tuning in. Thank you.
you for tuning in and we hope you enjoyed today's episode of the Iconic Women Show. We look forward to having you again. So don't forget to subscribe and do the three R's. Leave your ratings, reviews, and recommend to your family and friends. 